Pat. What? Donovan. That's me. This is this is the final samurai movie. That's and not you, that's listener. not true. You guys haven't even no, the I'm sorry. Yet. This is this so. is the final uh, final movie in 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 Marty's samurai trilogy. Um, right, the battle at Gary, Indiana. Hooray, right. Marty! And since we're here, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Donovan, for for sticking with us with all of your knowledge and wordiness. You've been very helpful. That's, you know, that's you're officially invited back. <laughs> well, that's good because in I think in the first. Uh, episode you said I was not invited back so I changed my mind uh, that has changed his mind you won me over once again thank you for listening this is Lost in Criterion the show where we slowly discuss all of the Criterion movies there's 612 I believe total uh, if you're listening thank you uh, but this is number 15 16 so good luck um, so we got a long way to go are you in for the long haul Pat Can and we I introduce ourselves be. I'm the Adam Glass I'm J. Patrick Owatari Dorgan. And, and our special week, guest is? Special I'm, guest. I'm uh, Donovan uh, Inagaki uh, <laughs> Marty. Masashi uh, Hill. Marty. My, Marty is my last, is my, actually my final family name. Yes. <laughs> final family. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, Marty. For some reason, uh, knowing your father, it's believable that that's your full name. That's, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if the, if the people in your podcast are ready for... Well, how much they have probably more Donovan's learned. dad talk. Yeah, if they've, I think they've learned enough. But if you and your dad could start a podcast wherein you discuss these movies as well as the Lord of the Rings cartoons, ooh, um, ooh and also the figurines that you guys have at Christmas time. <laughs> if you and your mother could start a podcast, talking about <laughs> I don't want to be part of, of podcast. that podcast. <laughs> I don't want to be part of a podcast <laughs> where I'm forced to listen to my mother's <laughs> explanations for why our crush. Is roughly equivalent in bodies to the city of Chicago. <laughs> at this point, has at least the as last many time I saw it, it was killed. The it. last time I saw it, it was eight square feet. Um, that's that's it, true. I saw it in what, like two thousand three or two thousand four. I don't even want to imagine what it looks like now. <laughs> yeah, um, you guys get like twenty new guys. A, it's a year I don't know where the hell all these people were at in in relation to <laughs> fucking Jerusalem. But, or Bethlehem, but God. Well, it, is the, it is the entire Elephants. city of Bethlehem. Ele- I will remind you that there is a full-on is... Arabian elephant that attended the birth of Christ. <laughs> I'm waiting for them with, to start using all of like the, really random. With like, We're all out of, of ideas. the attendant handlers and writers and support staff that an elephant requires to make that kind yes. of a trek. So, right, right. I think, I think just... The previous episodes have established uh, a relationship with with Pat and I. Now you have everything you need to know to understand where Donovan is coming from. Right, and how we know Donovan. Basically, it's directly related to Christmas figurines. Yes, Christmas figurines. If it weren't for those, we wouldn't even know Donovan. And forced uh, childhood upbringing uh, (laughs) in the way of the samurai, and uh, specifically samurai literature and cinematography. And cinema, uh, as well as... To, to which the actual, like, martial arts instruction, you know, purely athletic, if you want to call it that, part of that upbringing is like a such an afterthought to the philosophy <laughs> and literature forced part that came first. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pre uh, for whatever reason, in my father's <laughs> upbringing of me to just being able to go outside and do some basic exercise. Yes. <laughs> Other kids just, uh, go outside, just get to go outside and play like football or whatever. Nope. Not your dad. No. He's a doctor. He can't let that happen. No such luck. Let's get into movie number three, the duel at Genrio. Genrio. Gen, I, see, I, I said it right um, at the yeah. end of the last one. I think, I think. you said Gary Indiana. It's, well, we are you we, sure you didn't say Gary Indiana? You said Gary Indiana. Tommy oh. Inagaki's a seminal film, The Duel <laughs> at Gary Island. Uh, Gary Indiana. Uh, Gary Marty Indiana. Inagaki. Marty uh-huh. Inagaki. 
Uh, <laughs> Don't ruin your own uh, mockery of my <laughs> <laughs> duel at uh, Gary, Indiana, <laughs> where yeah, there you go. where Musashi arrived by boat. Uh, yes, as it turns out, which is possible. Yeah, Gary, Indiana is on the on the coast. Um, but yeah, I imagine Gonryu Island and Gary, Indiana probably smelled similar. That you know, yeah, now probably. Probably. Then too. All right. So this movie, this movie opens with uh, with uh, our our main rival, and he was briefly introduced at the end of the last movie and almost met. Uh, did we? We learned his name barely at the end of the last movie. <laughs> Kojiro. Kojiro Sasaki. I don't. Um, I wouldn't say that he's barely introduced. He has some pretty manipulative no, things no. he's getting he's, he's getting no, on he's, he's in there he's he's barely in there yeah but he's he in goes there in, he goes in there and he what let's see here he warns wait no is that right he, no what does he do somehow musashi he, is forewarned i don't remember how because he's forewarned of the yeah, ambush he sends i oh, i'm so confused i i, I can't yeah he's forewarned so. somehow by kojiro yeah kojiro is involved in the forewarning doesn't do anything about it as we discussed before, he could have, like, you know, roughed yeah. up those archers or something. But he doesn't. He just watches. Oh. And kind of smirks. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 smirks, has, he smirks pretty much every Yeah, time. I was going to say, he has one of his, what is a, apparently, other than bafflingly dumb names for his equipment and sword techniques, he has one of his patented smirks at the end of the yeah. fire, second film. Even, yeah, even, even, even at the end of... Of this movie, our very last view of him. Is, that's true. He dies. He dies. He dies how he lived, with a sword in his hands and a self-satisfied smug yeah, smirk on a, his face. A dumbass named Sword in his hands. Yes. 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 With yes. a and a smirk on his face. So it's 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 in this movie uh, where we uh, where we meet his his lover, uh, who uh, calls him the devil. <laughs> Immediately, yes. immediately in the first movie, because he cuts that swallow in half in mid-flight. That's not uh, his girlfriend. Fair, that is, I think that's a Kemi. Oh, no. That yeah. is still in. Was that a Kemi? That's that yes, is a Kemi. Kemi there. calls her the devil and calls him the devil. Still in yeah. captivity for reasons his, that don't. His girlfriend loves him desperately. Yes, yes. That's, we meet her later. Um, yeah. Right now he's hanging out in a waterfall uh, with with uh, like you do, a Kemi. <laughs> with not his girlfriend. Um, I don't think he's has he met his girlfriend yet. Yeah, I mean, in the we've course not of the film, we've not met her, so we don't. I know we don't follow him. To be very fair, much. he's just harassing random or one <laughs> random woman. He's not actually cheating on the other woman here. Something, harasses. something yeah. that comes out in the third film with regards to specifically him and Akemi that is brought up in the second film because that's a substantial chunk of his admittedly limited screen time in the second film is spent with Akemi as well. Is that he has yeah. some bizarre need to, number one, to opine about what a badass he is and how he's going to fight Musashi to her. <laughs> but yeah. More to torment her. But then in this film, you we see him free her from sexual bondage so that precisely so that she could go to Musashi. For, for what reason isn't really explained why? Uh, yeah. It's it's not yeah yeah that is because she weird doesn't scene she does not like, show up and say dude Kojiro is coming he's like two blocks away it's not even like as a haha warn him that his death is it's just he just does it kind of to be a dick but not even in a yeah it's like in a, he just does things with her specifically because, for yeah. no yeah. readily apparent well, it's reason. weird like you want to go to him don't you and then like oh. She, he frees her, and, and it's like, like watch the, oh, you want to go to him, huh? Well, I'm about to fuck your world up, because now I'm buying your freedom, so you can do exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, it's being a dick by being and nice. Then she's like, somehow. you're a monster, you've given me the p- specific thing I wanted with basically no strings attached. <laughs> but he also killed a bird, and he <laughs> promises to kill yeah, him. Yeah, he killed Miyamoto. Fucked up that bird. The same way as the bird. He's going to cut Miyamoto in half in mid-flight. Which <laughs> right, exactly the same. Yes. Well, yeah, no, uh, we get into this weird thing that like he wants her to suffer because she loves Miyamoto. Yeah. Which again we get into this whole thing, like later he soliloquies about not being a bad person or whatever. It's like, no, you are a dick. 
Because you freed her just to torture he her. He wants to... About the fact that he's going to murder her. Yeah. And murder him. Yeah. It's, but he doesn't even... It's weird. Yeah, he's... He has a bizarre, not exactly clear what is the hell is going on here relationship there. Yeah. Um, which is not... Which isn't really a love interest per se, even though it kind of starts out with him making overtures to her, which she rebuffs because she is in love with Musashi, which he then resents her for. But by this point, he has his little Stockholm Syndrome girlfriend... Yes. So who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that's what we get into is like, regardless of who he was in real life, the Kojiro of this movie is an abusive asshole. Yes. And he seems to just take a great deal of delight from torturing other people, but women specifically. Well, I don't know if he necessarily actually takes delight. He just always uh, has that smirk. Does so it? It's hard to that's, tell. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> right, right. The that's perpetual true. That's true. Kojiro <laughs> smirk makes it admittedly difficult to tell just what is going on. It's possible his face froze that way as a child. What specifically yeah. is your motivation at any given point, Kojiro? Because I've got to be honest, I, I can't tell. Yeah, it's really... It, it, that is one of the harder parts of these films is figuring out why he does any of the things he does. But like specifically, like we again we talked about earlier, the the I must duel the only person who could possibly compete with me thing is not terribly hard to understand. But everything else he does is impossible to understand. Also, you're like, yeah. have you tried? By, by I don't know if he's, I don't know if he gets to say that. I, have you tried to duel other people, Kojiro? Because I don't think we see you give <laughs> That's it. True. You haven't even tried. That's true. So it's a little yeah. premature he makes for a you statement. to be. But, but, well, he does. He does duel one other guy in this movie. He cripples the guy and feels regret. That's true. But which is again no, supposed. You know, he's he's in this movie. He's really set up as a mirror, in an inversion of uh, Miyamoto. Um, even in his relationship with his uh, Stockholm syndrome girlfriend uh, toward the end. Um, That's true. Yeah, he really is supposed to be that way, isn't he? Yeah, because uh, we've got... we've got When uh, when Musashi Miyamoto comes on screen in this movie, one of his first... Uh, in this specific movie, uh, one of the first things he says is he wants to be able to fight without regrets, and his past is full of regret. Um, so... This, I, I think, he's, through this movie, he's trying to get to the point where he's not just out for blood 100% of the time. Well, he's, I think, trying to get to the point where he never, ever fights again. Yeah. Is yeah. what he really wants. Yeah. Uh, where he's trying to humanize himself, and we we kind of get a little bit of uh, uh, Kojiro has is humanized he he he's already at that point but then at the end switches to Miyamoto's way and only wants only wants blood and only wants his blood specifically which is why he rebuffs his uh his his woman folk at the end uh where in the parallel scene uh just before the fight Miyamoto uh finally de- overtly declares his love for Otsu yeah um, so he's he set up, you know, as this parallel thing, and this is the only movie that does that. The second movie, we don't get that at all with him. Right, so. and I got a question, like, about him, because basically, in the end, Kojiro is the character we're going to talk about most from this film, yeah. <laughs> because he's m- almost more the main character than uh, Sashi, but um, at some points, and the question I have is, he... When, at what point, is it in the second film or the third film, does he declare that he's unparalleled? Well, Except I for think it's, you're supposed to read that from his perpetual smirk. The yeah. reason I ask that is because it seems to me that when I was watching, he announces that before he ever fights anybody on screen. No, no, that is that is true. Uh, he, uh, when, he's like, when there he's is no other match for me. At the, at the beginning, um, he insists that Miyamoto is his only equal when they're at the... Uh, Waterfall. And the, which is again, you're sort of left going. Listen, uh, Koji, can I call you Koji? I'm gonna call you Koji. Uh, you've really only been shown demonstrating that you can chop the hair off a man that has already been established as an ineffectual buffoon. <laughs> so yeah. declaring right, yourself right. master of the sword based on that display of, I mean, no, yeah, swallow turn, cool, great move. Uh, it's great for chopping hairs off dumb people that can't fight back, but. I don't know if that really is enough to extrapolate that you're the best in the world from that. Right, and then we 
And then, like, later, I guess, to, like, just in case the audience didn't buy it. They, he beats up four dudes. And it's not, not a very impressive display. No. Especially when you consider the fact that we have established in narration that Musashi has killed 60 guys. Yeah. In the, in, in you know, however much time exists well, between 60 the two films. Duels. 60 duels he killed. That's true. We don't know how many people he killed. Yes. But nonetheless, in the second movie, we actually see him fighting and, and establish that he's good at it. Uh, whereas we never get that establishment with Kojiro. Right, which is disappointing when you think about the fact that, like... We're building to them being great equals. Yeah, and, like, really, as Donovan pointed out in earlier, is, like, the story really should be two equals locked in battle because they have to be locked in battle, not because one of them is a bloodthirsty thirsty maniac. So it would have been really nice to see Kojiro be very human, you know what I mean? It would have been nice to see him, like, helping people and being nice and there's certainly but like also building towards this inevitable duel we've yeah. touched upon it a little that in the past more fun but film. there is certainly uh it is not necessarily historically supported that kochiro sasaki was a one-man douchebag wrecking machine uh <laughs> were like, right, right. there's not there's nothing really that says that like we just know that they fought a duel and kojiro was was pretty good and certainly that the he openly professed a desire to duel with Masashi, who he considered to be his, you know, his great rival. But there is no... It's, it's not necessarily extrapolated from that. Uh, right, and that's what I'm saying, is I think it would have been... The last two films would have been a, much more enjoyable if he had been created as a also sympathetic character. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think it, that both films would have been better. If we had built toward that duel because it's inevitable, rather than because he is a maniac who desperately wants to destroy Masashi for basically no conceivable reason. Right, which is where, which is again what I was referencing earlier, in that, like, Kojiro's, uh, is a character with a sort of schizophrenic motivation in that his stated declaration is to fight Musashi sort of for the love of the game, or, or you know, a similar as, yeah. you know, out of the purity of being, you know, two swordsmen who are compelled by their by their trades to to seek con to seek duel to seek to measure their strength against other great men uh which is not even though they are fighting you know to the death is not a is not an act done with malice or anger or dislike of the other person and in fact is is a is this really bizarre thing where i am compelled to fight this man to the death because i have such great uh admiration and respect for him uh, but with, and then, but then everything else that, that Kojiro does is, on the other hand, I'm a huge asshole. <laughs> right, yeah, and so it's really, so you're not yeah, sure, like, what, what is your, what is your story. motivation here? Is it the love of the game, like, we're great swordsmen, this is what we do, that you profess? Or is it that you are a dick who wants to break, break Akemi's mind more than it already is, and, also, your future fiance or whatever and like, she is, and yeah, or just like be mean to people or whatever exactly you're going on with here. <laughs> yeah. Like, just be a just, just be a dick. General yeah. being a dick. So yeah, there's. I feel I feel that the film kind of doesn't. Do, he he. Do, his motivation is is simultaneously expressed to be a thing of great uh, purity coming from a person who is as impure and malicious as we can possibly make him. And, I, yeah, I think it does do a... I think it has that has a very damaging effect on the effectiveness of the story of not just Gojiro, but also Musashi, because he's... He's engaged in this battle that he finds tranquility in a battle where it would have made more sense if it were more that real, like, purity battle instead of a battle with a douche if Ko- yeah again yeah if kojiro had been demonstrated to have put put his duel with musashi you know if this this thing you know above any other concern and that essentially like you know that his respect for musashi trumps whatever other temporary like if he had in fact stepped in at the end of the second movie and fought, fought off guys with him because you know he's he values his 
he respects him enough as an opponent that he does not believe that he should meet so treacherous an end, uh, that would have established, you know, his stated motivation for wanting this duel better than, watch me fuck up this bird. Yeah, you see that? That's what I'm going to do <laughs> yeah, to Masashi. To get all these. I'm so, all, I'm such a, you know, I'm such a, you know, single, single-minded and focused swordsman that this is how you can tell, because I fucked up that bird. Yeah, I teach birds lessons <laughs> all day long. See that swallow? Not swallow enough. And then... Well, I think... I think doesn't even make sense. What are you saying, Kojiro? You're not... I close angered the hell out yeah. of you. <laughs> well, Wait, what? I think the swallow scene also sets another parallel to, to the flies with with uh, Musashi later. Um, in that uh, it's it's still cutting a bird down in mid-flight. It's still a pretty impressive thing to do, just as impressive as catching catching flies. I don't know if it's just as impressive. It's up there. It's close, but top. It's, it's up top there, five but I'm most gonna say I think the flies are more anime than. things to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But I gotta say that the, the the catching flies with chopsticks is probably the most. Yes. Is the and number scene, one. That scene is played so well because it's it's so subtly done. I think. And it's just, he's very calmly catching the flies. And we don't even necessarily know what he's doing. We're also, it's sort of not, he's not making a show of it. He's just sort of annoyed that there's all these goddamn flies in his bowl. Uh, And he's just sort of going about the natural process of, well, I kind of need to not have all these fucking flies up in my food. Whereas Kojiro is, you know, pure, you know, self-aggrandizing showmanship. Yeah. Right, I'm going to cut down this bird so everybody knows how freaking awesome I this am. This bird is fucked. Watch this. That's, yeah. Uh, it's better true. run away it's all true. the rest of you birds. Yeah, see if any... Is... Same thing could happen to you. No. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta leave it there. You gotta leave it there to scare them off. The <laughs> <messed> up, <laughs> right. Like, put it on a yeah, pike in the middle of the... Uh, <laughs> middle of the... This bird is about to get its ass kicked. Uh, well, we don't know what that bird did to him. We do, it's yeah, not, maybe, maybe there's a long history of the bird. <laughs> Eight years have passed since the last movie. Right, who, that, who that bird has that been just following and tormenting him. fucked up my practice for the last time, him. bird. So there's certain... I've asked you so many times to take it outside. There's definitely a, a, conf, a conflict of sorts between what what is his stated motivation for doing the things he does and what is every single other word that comes out of his mouth and action he takes say that he's doing this for which i in some ways belittles his status as the great rival because it turns instead of the duel is obviously this great titanic you know clash of the titans battling for the purity of you know the way of the warrior but it's also kind of just it sort of demeans the final fight with yeah, and then Musashi goes out there and finally, like, smacks around this asshole that's been hassling him for, like, a decade without really coming out and actually fighting him. Even though, conceivably, he could have been chosen any point in the last eight years to come do it. Yeah. Well, some people are just conflicted. I suppose that's true. <laughs> what? Well, we like. There's a bunch of weird things though about this. Like, we get like, there's a, is even in the final fight, we get these things with like Kojiro where it's like, oh, we're supposed to like totally respect the uh, the the like this. I'm gonna use a word that is not a word. The strategery of uh, Miyamoto because he's, he's got the sun to his back, and it's like. No, it just means Kojiro's really shitty at this. It's, it means Kojiro hasn't he figured out to like move right. over to the right so that you guys are both parallel <laughs> with the, with both of you having the sun on one side, so you aren't at a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, Tactics is hard. Yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> apparently, apparently, so is not staring into the sun. Which they make a like which, which my which, son has mastered at two years the, old. Which the film makes a dedicated point of showing that like man, Kojiro's getting fucked up by this sunlight. They like specifically yeah, right, show exactly. him being like the sun. I can't see. It, I can't. I can't see anything. And it's sort of like, well, what are you exactly? Are you? How did you Move, get to be? You're, this, you're on a wide flat plane. You could fix what, that. How did really you get easy. to be the, allegedly the one of the best in the world by being right, so like, easily and besties? Not even moving. Just sidle over. 
So yeah, it's no. Well, the, so we should. I guess it's to a be little fair, known fact could, that the the that the, s- the swallow turn requires you to be looking directly into the. Sky. I also all right. So we could Maybe. probably back up at this point and and talk about the like random intermission where he becomes a farmer and fends off bandits seven <laughs> samurai style. It. Yeah, I love where where basically they they tell the entire story of Seven Samurai in, like, in microcosm, like, except half it's just an hour. One. Yeah, well, it it humanizes him. The soil the soil teaches him. I think he says at one point because he used to. Uh, it's it's how he's uh, you know, stopped it longing him how to for grow, battle grow roots. a little bit. Yes. Well, it's also taught him that there's more to life than killing. Right. There's growing roots. Yes. Somebody's got to grow the roots. Right. And it's apparently Masashi. The greatest swordsman yes. to ever. Yeah, live. I feel like he can learn that lesson without necessarily having, you know, prioritize here, uh, delegate maybe <laughs> to someone who doesn't, who isn't also a super master swordsman. Maybe have him do the do the plowing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but what do well, I know? You know. <laughs> or maybe I don't know. Make. Uh, I also like the fact one that of his it, followers do it. I I like the fact that. Apparently, the only thing it takes to become Sashi's follower is just to decide you're going to become. Yeah, Sashi's just start follower. following him around. He'll, he'll right, he doesn't exactly. really put up. I much guess of it's a, a it's a very literal definition of follower. Yes, yes, it is. It is rather it's than not, slightly more metaphorical. It's not a disciple. It's an actual. It's it just is, a follower. This, it's a duty just to follow. This guy follower. literally started walking five feet behind me everywhere <laughs> I go. I cannot get rid of him. This is this is kind of what my life has become here. Well, yeah, we're talking about the greatest swordsman to ever live, and he just basically puts up with the the horse dealer following him around. I was like, well, okay, whatever. But you know what? I think it was a deliberate plan, because he was like, man, I cannot start a farm by myself. (laughs) So he's collecting people to help him He's just collecting guys to just help him Hey, do you want to learn about, like, putting down roots or whatever? (laughs) I mean, sword yes. play. Uh, yeah, what, sword play, uh, not farming. No, That's... no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sword play. Has nothing to do with roots. <laughs> oh, I, Akemi gets gets a slight redemption here. Uh, as she, well, she becomes overtly I was going to say, you may want to um, backtrack on the redemption part and point yeah. out what comes first. Yeah, she becomes overtly evil, uh, leading the bandits, uh, burning, uh, trying to kill everyone, basically. Like you do. Uh, single-handedly. Like she does. Anyone who has ever uh, brought her displeasure in life. Um, has it coming. And man, does she make has a it mess coming. of it. So she she uh, she tries to kill Miyamoto. She tries to kill... Akemi. Turns out it is, in or, fact, kind of hard to, to like swords. outfox and sneak up on the world's greatest swordsman when you wear fucking cat bells everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she yeah, still she doesn't really think that one No. Probably not. Well, um, I mean, like... You know what? I love the scene where, like, we know what what her motivation is as disturbing. As Do it we? Is. But I love. No, I mean, like, she's a psychopath. Okay. Yes, that's her motivation. Will... She yes. kills. She's out to kill her unrequited love and all these things. But my, my real issue is when she meets Mister Awesome Mustache. Yes. As a bandit, he comes back. He, his yeah. statement when he sends her into the village is, "He spared your life. You owe him." So that's the worst argument ever. Like, he could have killed you, but he didn't. But so he now didn't. you need to do this thing, and if you don't, I'll kill you. But, like, that doesn't make any sense. Theoretically, in the village with the greatest swordsman who has ever lived, she's as safe as she'll ever be. Yeah. She could have just not done She could have just walked in and been like, well, I guess you're a dumbass for letting me come over there. here where this dude is who can totally kill all of you. Suckers. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And so... Basically, she does exactly what she does because she is just a psychopath. Yeah. We finally she's established no that she is she's just got a no psychopath. Reason. She's got no reason to go through with the plan. Um, which which that, makes Mr. Know, Austin mustache the absolute worst bad guy ever. Yeah. I, I feel like well, that's established by the it? fact that he gets his hair cut off like a doofus. Uh, well, but it also establishes <laughs> that Mr. Also Awesome Mustache is, is, is his boss. Is also the worst yeah. villain ever. Uh, yeah, I finally the, have shown my face. Ch- now I'm gonna get worked and then left alive. Like, yeah. basically, the bandits that Musashi's defeat of the bandits is about the least impressive thing he does in all the films. Uh, especially, yeah. especially since he kind of screws it up at times. Yeah, like 
all of his yeah. buddies get worked. Basically. Like the his yeah. the horse friend, dead. Uh <laughs> the kid uh is just, you know, kind of shows up and is like, well, I guess I'm here too while this is all going down. I will do my best to not get murdered while you are over there ineffectually fighting these guys. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. While you're at yeah. it, I guess. All right. So, um, it was it was a Kemi though who who triggered that battle by burning by starting the fire. Was the uh, was the then... fire starting an accident though, right? Because she just knocks the oil lamp ultimately? over while they're fighting. Okay. I think honestly, okay. I'm not trying to redeem the redeem the worst character in the film, but I get the impression that when she decides to fight uh, Otsu, she has yeah. already decided to not work with the bandits, but she is going to try and kill Otsu because she wants well, Sashi. Yeah. Yes. But no, I think that I mean, she's sense. already decided not to help the bandits. It seemed to me. Yeah. But then she accidentally knocks the lamp over because. Uh, DSX yeah. Machina? Yeah, because it has to happen. And then the bandits come, and she has a moment of regret, and she starts trying to save Otsu, who she moments before was trying to kill, mm. uh, and, and does so by... Uh, she she gets her slight redemption in death, I suppose, by by killing Mr. Fancy Mustache at the same time. That he Fancy Mustache her. is the one that's banging her mom, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, not anymore because her mom's dead. Well, as she her mom's actually. How did her mother? I yeah. forget. He's, how did her mother? He sold her. Die. He so, think... fancy mustache sold out Oko, Oko, yeah. uh, Akemi's mom. mom when he was captured. Yeah, and basically let the bandit chief kill her instead. It's not really clear. Well, the bandit chief wanted revenge because uh, she and Miyamoto when they first met. Uh, had killed his brother, but they only killed his brother because uh, those guys had killed Oko's husband. Um, and this is why revenge is a bad reason for doing things. Right. Th- thank you, but, Samurai. But that is, back that is, that is, that is, it, that is a over. lesson. That is a lesson humanity will never learn. Mm. <laughs> Hooray! And thank God for that. Because otherwise, where would we be, be in cinematography? Yeah. And stuff. Anyway, um, so they fight, and finally he wins, despite the horse dealer dying. And Poor who horse knows dealer. how many peasants. Yeah, they're just Countless murdered peasants. wholesale. It, yeah, again, kind of a shitty job of protecting all these guys, since a yeah. pretty sizable yeah. portion of them die or get their houses burned down. Since this isn't actually the Seventh Samurai, and we have no emotional investment with the with the peasants themselves. They're just it allowed matter. to die um, in mass. Yeah. Everybody can die. And then he finally apologizes to Otsu. Hooray! Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, fight to the death, maybe die, uh, later. So just wanted just wanted to tell you I'm sorry before I probably die. Could you die. crack a smile for so, me, though? Well, Thank maybe. You. That's, that's probably maybe. the Here's weirdest a part of the whole... This is just, like, really sadistic, like, smile for me before. Smile. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Musashi <laughs> is wrong with you. Then he, then he tells her not to be unreasonable. Yes. And, and her only response is, I'm yeah, a woman. Like, Thank you. That, we, <laughs> we needed that, yeah. we needed bring, that last that back in that to, conversation. To where we needed to be. Thank you, Otsu. With the, with the yeah. treatment of yeah, women in this film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just sort <sighs> of a weird thing. Because, like, yeah, he goes off to his duel to death. And he, yeah, he, yeah, it's, I don't know where I'm going with this. It's weird. Hilarious it doesn't make any is sense. the word you were looking for. Yeah, hilarious is a good word. Yeah. Well, it it, it, it finish is the storyline. This movie, you know, finally finally pulls everything together. I wish well, I wish I they'd just thrown Marahachi back in there just for shits and giggles. One yeah, more time. Right, him him back. Shown him like showed him like you know, turning tricks behind an in an alley or something. I don't know what it's he could have been in Edo, uh where no one wears pants. Right. Um, his I like that about Edo. How 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 we get we get Ito, and then just two scenes of no one wearing pants. Historically yeah, accurate. <laughs> capital. I hope so. The word capital really means no pants land. <laughs> yes. Well, you're politically important. Why would you wear pants? Yeah. 
So anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, he's not around. But other than that, everything else gets resolved. Yeah. Um, except for Oku just dies off screen, but that's fine. Who he, cares? He didn't need to. Who cares about her? Well, I she, like how they really make a big deal out of her in the second film, and then they just let her die off screen before the third one. It's like, oh, yeah. forget it. Yeah, probably couldn't get the actor. You didn't really care about the lady more anyway, did you? Yeah, we didn't think so. That's my guess. Yeah. They couldn't get the actress to come back. Maybe. And so Maybe. it's like, eh, we'll just kill her off. We throw in Contract this, throw in this line of dialogue. We'll just say she died. It'll be fine. No one's gonna, no one's gonna bother reading. No the work anyway. here. Ah, <laughs> oh, hooray! Uh, yeah. So basically, this film is just the battle at the end, right? It's, it's yeah, that's the whole this film. building. This film. Well, no, this film builds to that battle, but it builds to that battle by, by again, as I said, trying to establish Kojiro as as Matashi's flip side to, to his coin. Um, uh, and and he does that. You know, he actually feels regret when he cripples the guy. He goes to visit he him. He does, but because of the smirk. <laughs> but yeah, because never of the quite really him. hard. Yeah, like, it's really hard to see, like, compassion in Smirky McSmirkerson. Because yeah. even he's, when he's apologizing, he's, he's like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and then, and then like... He's, <laughs> yeah, he's always, like, one second away from just, like, cracking up, like, oh, I'm so sorry about fucking the upright. <laughs> oh. And then, come on, what's with the other guy? Like, I should have... It's not your fault. I suck. It's like, no, yeah. it is your fault, because you could have pulled your attack. Like, there was no reason to beat yeah. the hell out of him. Maybe better luck so next right. time, dumbass. Yeah, but it's like, it's really like, the lesson you learn is, don't fuck with Kojiro, because even if there's no reason to hurt you, he will. He's probably just gonna fucking wreck your shit, for shits and giggles. He's gonna cripple you, for no goddamn yeah, reason. Yeah, he's kinda, like, afterwards, when he's talking about it, he's like, yeah, maybe I should well, he's crippled. Like, when he's, <laughs> yeah. when he's telling he's his like girlfriend, he's just like, I think I overdid it. He's crippled for life. You think you overdid it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I may have gone a touch harder. Uh, I, I may have... May... May yeah. have taken Oops. it a little too far. He's uh, crippled uh, for the rest of his life. I can't remember what the girlfriend says at that point, but it, I feel like it was the most absurd thing you could possibly say in that situation, too. Something like, it's not your fault... She's like, oh, you're... I can't remember. She, she's, at some point, says something to the effect of, like, that's what I like about you. You're an asshole. Yeah, right, is that I murder, you murder people you for no reason. You crippled this yeah, dude yeah. who you have zero reason to do physical harm to for life, basically because <sighs> you couldn't be bothered to check yourself. Well, right, that's yeah. the thing no, that's... is, is, like, it, and we do get into this thing because, like, in the second film, it's right, is it the second film or the third film, where the... the the crazy old priest is telling him, like, you're too powerful. You Oh, that's the, be- is the second, beginning like, of the second right. film. And we do see that there's a contrast there for uh, Kojiro, too. He has n- he never makes any attempt to check himself, to, to pull back. Yeah. He goes full yeah. throttle all the time, regardless of the necessity of the situation. Because when he's fighting that pikeman, there's no reason. There's no reason to cripple that man. He dodges the, the pikeman's initial attack. He could have just pulled him onto his ass. Yeah, and just he could have embarrassed yeah, him, which would have been, him. you know, which would have worked. Yeah, just as well. Would have actually probably gotten him the job easier than just crippling yeah. somebody for no reason. Other than that, it's totally no There's... fun. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's what we get. We almost not get the, crippling like, people. Isn't we get the. It just lends us more to the impression that Kojiro cripples people for fun. Yeah. He's a dick for funsies. Cuts yeah, it's in half, every cripples, basically he is cons- crippled strangers displayed to be like what? What do you figure is fucking wrong with this guy? Because he's just mean. He he names his sore clothes hanger. He names his his, his signature attack swallow turn, and then he just beats the hell out of people for no reason. Yeah, and the four guys he kills. Why does he kill those four guys? Do we ever? Get no, that? we get no reason other than the fact that he yeah, wants he, to show he's powerful. Yeah, he killed them. Miyamoto finds the bodies, takes the bodies to the school, uh, who who says that they can't possibly belong to this school. Our our guys would never. Be well, I mean, thieves. unless his motivation, because he's the teacher of the um, what, the emperor, right? 
Yeah. And so to demonstrate that he's better than the pupils of the teacher of the emperor. Yeah. Which is convoluted he's because to set himself up. It is, yeah, he's maybe trying to put himself in a situation where I'm good enough to be the teacher of the emperor now. And there's a certain yeah. amount of that that uh, that is historically true. There does appear to have been some unspoken tension between him and the Yagyu because he basically, there's some indication that he wanted the job the Yagyu had, which was the shogun's, the official, the officially endorsed fencing school of the shogunate who taught who was an advisor as well as a fencing instructor to the Shogun himself. And there's some indication yeah. that he he, he, right, he, right. And so, he spent his life, at least at some point, coveting that recognition uh, and never really, you know, in his lifetime got that kind of official recognition. Certainly he was renowned, but he yeah. never really got the, this, the... He never really got the Nike sponsorship like the Yagyus did. Yeah. Uh... So there's the, there does appear no, to be something it, to that. The implication here, he's trying to set himself right. up for that. So, and if that's vaguely historically accurate, and, and the audience watching this ought to have known a little bit about the history, at least uh, more than I do, I would hope. Um, but yeah, and and I I, <clears throat> I accepted that as his reason when I was watching it, but at the same time, it was sort of it still does have that sort of like, oh, here's some random violence. Yeah. It does. It does lead to my favorite scene, though, uh, at least cinematographically wise. Um, I we're having trouble lot, with uh, we're been. having trouble with words um, tonight in general. I think it's true. It's true. Uh, anyway, uh, one of my favorite scenes as uh, as Musashi Miyamoto is burying those four students um, since the school refuses them. Um, I we get uh, Kojiro watching from the shadows, like. I don't know, a lion in the night. Like a creepo. Uh, with like, his, yeah, with like his creepo. creepo smirk on. Yeah. Um, and and just, you know, hide in the shadows. And Miyamoto, first time seeing him, thanks him for his help in the last movie. Um, which I guess is, is his... Him, he's beginning to humble himself. Even though Kojiro didn't do a whole lot to help yeah, him. Yeah, just last warned movie. him, I guess. Yeah. Just the warnings. <clears throat> no actual... The warnings that, yeah, he couldn't be just... bothered to fucking follow up on even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, there's a bunch of dudes up there waiting to kill you in an ambush. I will stand so, right here in a position of yeah, easy I've... intervention and not do anything. Yeah, I've got... Well, you know, I don't want to I don't want to spill my beer. Or whatever. I'm sure yeah. you can handle it. I don't want to take your thunder or anything here. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I always stepped on any toes. It's... You... I just I like I like the way that scene is filmed. Just yeah, that is that. There are there's a few the pretty t- scenes. The lighting that. in that scene is is pretty pretty awesome. And then they ch- and he challenges. Yeah, Miyamoto thanks him for his help in the last movie, and Kojiro responds by challenging him to a duel right uh, the next morning, which they miss because Miyamoto leaves. Yeah, but I really love the way. Um... What is his name? Jotaro delivers the uh, <laughs> delivers the message. He like sort of like walks up a little bit and then sort of like in a very like twelve year old or thirteen year old fashion, just sort of like chucks it at his feet and runs away. That's yes. a fun little thing to see. It's a, yeah, no, it's I like good. that kid. I like it. He's my my he's my favorite character. He's I can't wait until he becomes nice. <laughs> <and, laughs> wait, no. <laughs> Ah, oh, uh, where are we? I guess we can we can move on to the final scene. Yeah, w- um, even though we've pretty much discussed it in length already. We we've, we've already discussed it. Well, we we haven't we haven't gotten everything. No, we haven't the, we uh, haven't mentioned too much the fighting with the ore, which I can't really yes. figure out why he does. He says, "I like the weight." Yeah. Uh, is there... Musashi's a stone cold killer who enjoys brutalizing people with blunt objects when he has the option to do so. <laughs> yes. I, was, I mentioned this to Adam yes. like a couple of days ago. If in 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 the story, which is true, uh, you know, it is it is yeah. shown that this is the level of you know consummate skill that Musashi had that he can basically drunkenly base you know roughly approximate a sword out of a ore. And still beat, you know, the finest swordsman of the day with it. And if this was a story told in modern time, it would be like 
the beginning of a Law and Order episode where they find Kojiro's body and they would remark on the horror and the brutality of his killer that he bashed him to death with a boat oar. Uh, <laughs> like, right, right, right. said he, that he, you know. We see here evidence at the crime scene that he had a sword. It's like. But he chose to beat him to that death he, with that a he boat oar. opted for the blunt object, uh, to beat him to death with. Yeah. Which is, which. That's just. That's, he's yeah, wicked. That he, he's bad. Which, which that's is completely he unnecessary. He knows he's going to a duel to the death. He has got his swords because he draws the other one at the end of the, like, in the battle. And yet, why doesn't he just yeah. bring his other sword? Although I guess maybe, yeah, it's weird because the way I read it at was a bit of really out of character cockiness. Because it's yeah. the same sort of thing we get with Kojiro when he fights the Pike Man, where he refuses to use a real sword, but insists yeah. that the other person that's, use that's exactly, a, a. It's another a, parallel. Moment. But it's weird because it's totally out of character for Musashi at this point. Yeah, he he right. shouldn't be doing this because, like, he's supposed to be above beating people nearly to or beating people to death with a blunt object to show how awesome he is. It's out of character, is what I'm saying. He got plenty of that in the first film. He does in, like, 68 people with a with a wooden sword in the first film alone. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, like, seven. We but, already yeah. know that he can beat people up. Yeah. So we don't need to, we don't need to prove but it. But if it's part of the real um, story, I guess they couldn't... Well, yeah, obviously they can't have him use a sword yeah. if he really went. But the way they've established him already in this movie, um, especially coming straight off the scene with Otsu into this... Um, it's it's very uncharacteristically cocky. Right. Yeah, I if I were the filmmakers, I probably would have written in something where like he didn't take his sword for some reason, even if it's yeah. not historically yeah. accurate. I would be like, I give it to Otsu because I wanted her to remember me or something, yeah. some bullshit to just give us a reason why he shows up sans sword. Yeah, but it, but he doesn't even because he, well, he has, has one. he's got the short he's sword because he uses that. But he doesn't have a Yeah, we don't really know where it but, went, do we? Yeah. No, we that's, it that's just shit. it. It's never really explained why a man who has never parted from his weapons just doesn't have his weapons on him right now. Yeah. Um, he was so distraught from his conversation with us. <laughs> it's like, oh god, I left it in my other pants. <laughs> Maybe he left it in, in his, uh, in his... Burned down uh, village by accident. Yeah, it's, yeah, well, yeah well, maybe he does. You're, I, they, I, they don't <laughs> show it after his. Yeah, after his. Yeah, so maybe it got destroyed. Duel there. Maybe I don't know, but you know, yeah, um, apparently he has enough to buy the finest textiles to ever exist. <laughs> he can't afford to buy a new sword. You think he can get for his? Well, he doesn't duel? have the time. He's got to oh, get out come there. On. According to this film, swords are literally everywhere in feudal Japan. You can't you can't no, walk two feet one. without stepping on a damn sword. Take it off one of the other dead people right, that, exactly. that you have created. Take it off one of the bandits, yeah. <laughs> you have created. <laughs> yeah, so there's no excuse. <laughs> no, there's really not. Um, the fact but that he's, he's part still... of the story and it has to happen. Yeah. Or else people won't even recognize this as the story so of Mi- awesome. Musashi Miyamoto. If he doesn't do this part, they'll be like, well, "Whose story was this again?" Uh, so there's <laughs> yeah, the entire middle of the film, which is the basically his attempt to live a retired life before <laughs> yeah before Kojiro fucks it all up by sending a Kemi in there to cause problems. Uh, yeah, you're also sort of not sure. Given the way that that whole thing pans out, which has some more, like, sort of unrequited things going on between him and Otsu, uh, which makes Otsu's character sort of detestable at some point, and that she keeps following him around, screaming, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then when he attempts to consummate or reciprocate or, you know, makes advances back at her, she falls to the ground and tells him to stop. And it's there's a certain amount of, like, well, what... Lady, what... I don't understand... What are we doing here? Basically. 
because you you have followed him around for the better part of a decade now, declaring your love for him, and when he wants to settle down and 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 re, and respond and say, well, uh, well, okay, uh, let's whatever you know whatever she's could she tells him to stop doing that and she's not going to do that and i don't understand why she continues to follow him around the entire nation of japan for the better part of a decade hollering at him from 20 feet away that she loves him and she wants him to come with her and then when he attempts to do that exact thing she wants she's angry or or refuses yes. him and then when he says, "Well, well, all right, I'm gonna," she's a woman. I'm gonna leave. Then I guess. Then we're back to her following him around, screaming. Wait a minute. That part where I I said not to do that. That was no. So I don't know what exactly her we're supposed to glean. I don't know. Every every woman in this movie is either begging to be taken or lamenting the fact that she was so. Yeah, so basically they're just they're Ugh. basically non characters. Like as bad as I feel for O two yeah. throughout the first two films. Yeah, they they are yeah. kind of like the worst written characters ever. And it's, it's sadly they are the yeah, worst. Yeah, I mean characters. it's like it's really like writing done by somebody who has absolutely no idea how to write a love story, or just no respect for. Right. Females, period. Well, yeah, somehow doesn't see the female half of the love story as a necessary component. Yeah. Well, this is the story of a love between a man named Sashi and Jotaro. His boy, <laughs> boy companion. And his manservant Jotaro. And his manservant <laughs> horse thief guy who becomes a farmer or something. Jotaro's yes. manservant. Yeah. Yeah. Train of manservant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ultimately, good movie. Second one, yeah. So what are we? What are we got? So good. first one, pretty good movie. Very unsatisfactory yeah, deserved, as far as like plot. It deserved the Oscar, yeah. even though it wasn't a real Oscar. Number two, not a movie. Well, not really a, a thing. A film, just an ad. A film. An ad for yeah, the third a, one. The second and third movie are one. Are one film. It's, it's basically yeah. The, basically, the situation yeah. is that there is there is the first movie. Yeah. And then there's the second film, which is broken into two parts. Right, right. The second one is, oh crap, this thing's already an hour and a half long. We gotta end it right here, and then we'll just pick it up at the next one. Yes. And then number three is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Um, it, it achieves what it's out right. to do. Make Kuchiha look like a total asshat. Right, yeah. that's the main purpose, right, of the third one? Do you? Is there another totally. purpose that you can derive from it? Because I don't. <laughs> well, it's where I am. Watch Masashi Miyamoto on a boat. Could be a purpose. He's on a boat. There's yeah. I suppose that's you. You may have. Something. He looked pretty badass on the boat with the with the sunset. Yeah. No sunrise. Well, isn't whatever. It it doesn't matter. It to be? It looks the same at any given point in time. Yeah. Anyway, sunrise, sunset. Yeah, to me, saying. it probably is sunrise. I think you're right because they like Kojira gets there in the morning, uh, gets there at night, and it becomes yeah. daylight. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I kind of sure zoned out a little sunrise. bit at that point because I was like, "Man, can you guys just hurry up and fight?" And then they fight, and it's the longest action scene in the <laughs> at, movie at a whole two um, minutes by, <laughs> by by yeah, two minutes. Um, yeah. No. Anyway. Do we have anything else to add? Um, the conversation is kind of done. Yeah, well, I mean, we're at we 50 in... minutes. This is about the average for one of these episodes, frankly. And, and this this was a tough series of movies to watch in general and, and talk about, yeah. I feel. Because yeah. they have to be taken as a whole, but even taken as a whole, they're a little bit rough. So They are rough around yeah. the edges in a number of fairly important ways. <laughs> yeah, it's good enough. So just plot and character development of anybody except for Musashi. Yeah. Well, thanks for yeah. listening to Lost in Translation. <laughs> Lost in Cartoon this time. See, I said Lost in yeah, Translation. We, where are we? What is plenty of, plenty of that going on. on, too. But We're dead. Listen, guys. Listen, guys. If you thought these movies were hard to discuss, wait till next time. What are we time talking around. about next time? Spine, Spine 17. Pierre, Pierre Paolo's, Paolo Pasolini's 
Selo, or the 120 Days of Sodom, a modern reinterpretation of the works of the Marquis de Sade, what? which promises been, to make me been there, I really done hope. That. I really hope it's dubbed exactly like <laughs> Hard Boiled was. <laughs> ah, well, it's, it's Italian, so it, uh, it, yeah, we'll we'll see how it works out. But I anticipate uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> being disgusted. This is going to be a this very movie. interesting conversation between me and Adam. Yes. So listen next time for hopefully the most awkward episode we will ever do. See you next time.